Hello everyone. Today in the Cousin's Kitchen, we're going to be making two pizzas. Sometimes you don't want to buy pizza. You want to actually do something a little fun, maybe with your kids or maybe just as a family bonding thing, or maybe you can't find pizza that you like. Well, it's pretty simple. I'm doing it kind of semi-homemade. Um, first thing you need to know is we have a pizza stone, but it's in the oven, so I can't quite, I can show it to you in the oven, but this is a set, pizza stone and pizza peel. This is the peel, and the stone is basically like a ceramic stone that um, you put in the oven while it's cold. You start the oven to, you turn the oven on 500, and you let that stone heat up for half an hour until the oven is heated to 500 then you could leave it on. Friendly grocery store, since we live in South Florida, the grocery store we use is Publix. Publix sells pizza dough, fresh pizza dough. Um, if you want to do wheat pizza dough, you can. Um, however, it takes about, it's a 24 hour lead time because you have to let the dough rest and rise, rest and rise. Or if you have a bread maker, you can put it on a pizza dough setting and use your um, wheat flour, but we're doing today white flour pizza dough. Already made from Publix, so take it out the bag. The only thing I did when we bought it from Publix was I allowed it to um, rise in the warm oven. You're also going to need some cornmeal. You really want, the cornmeal I have is a fine grain. You can use um, a, oops, you can use a thicker grain cornmeal. You want to put it on the peel, preferably before you put the dough. <laughs> but you know, pizza's not a perfect science. It's okay. <laughs> Don't laugh. It's not funny. It's entertaining. It's entertainment. Shut up. <laughs> you can have fun in the kitchen. Just in case anybody was wondering, there are two of us, except somebody has to record. Yes, I'm not throwing my voice. Okay, so the pizza dough is about the size of my pizza peel. The first pizza that we're gonna do is a seven cheese. It was supposed to be six cheese or five cheese. However, as I said, because it's semi-homemade, I don't think there's a reason to reinvent the wheel. In our local grocery store, Publix, there was a six cheese Italian mix of shredded cheese. I like it because it's already shredded. Therefore, I bought the six cheese and then we also got smoked Gouda because I love Gouda. And we're going to mix that in to our cheeses. First step. Again, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. If you want to make homemade spaghetti sauce, you can. I'm using ragu chunky tomato garlic and onion. But if you want to go off and get your own separate cheeses, you can. Make sure they include mozzarella and provolone. Everything after that is up to you. 
This one has mozzarella, provolone, parmesan, asiago, fontina, and romano. So now we're going to cut up some basil to go on the pizza before we put it in the oven. Again, use fresh basil. Trust me. It's right on top. You don't really want that too much on top because... The basil can burn. Yes, the basil will burn. It's not going to taste too funny, but I prefer my basil not burn. It's just me. <laughs> um, but I also like a lot of basil. I really do. <laughs> Get off the Gouda, Chloe. Huh. As you can see, folks, Chloe is depleting our gouda when we have to use gouda for our next pizza. Our next pizza, guys, is going to be a shrimp and spinach pizza with the same seven cheeses because why not? We have it, so. Mm. More cheese, the better. Of course, you could pour this in a container and brush it on. Brush it on, or you know. But this is my house, and it's my oil, and my hands are clean because I make sure I wash my hands before I start cooking. So, <laughs> again, it's part of the love in the cooking. <laughs> okay, guys, you're uh, experiencing with me. First time I've used this particular peel, so let's hope we can get it off. Bring in the spatula. Whew. Gonna Let's bring see the how this works out. Bring the stone out. Oh. Of course it's not gonna come off easily. Huh. Like I said, not a perfect science. Definitely not. It's going, it's going, it's there going. Go. Awesome. Now mind you, yes, I did get some cheese and basil on the stone. That's okay. It will burn or something, but that's okay. You can always clean your stone when you're done. That will stay in the oven for about seven to ten minutes until it's bubbly in the center. So, see you in seven to ten minutes. Hi guys, it is now seven to ten minutes later. Um, we're gonna look in at our pizza. It's nice and fluffy. Definitely a deep dish, not a flat crust or a thin crust at all. And it's nice and brown. So now I can get my peel under it, take it out, and slide. 
See, like a real pizzeria. Now, you do not want to cut in this directly. You want to let it rest before you cut into it. So we will go back to this once we get our other pizza ready and in the oven. Now, this pizza is going to be a spinach and shrimp pizza, of course, with our seven cheeses. Be in the sauce, so oh, that's my song. Can find you. So, I'm spreading about the shrimp on the pizza. I'm gonna make two of these, that's why I'm kind of spreading it. Now, I just used shrimp, I just used it with my hand, so I'm gonna wash my hands. Cooking Hygiene 101. Always wash after handling raw food. And again, guys, the beauty of making your own food is that you control what goes in it. You control the salt, you control the spices, everything. Exactly. Notice I did not put any additional salt other than whatever's in that sauce. Okay, we'll have a little piece. Me and Chloe are going to share a piece. You always taste something after you make it, before you serve it to other people. That is our excuse and we're sticking with it. Exactly. <laughs> That's our story, we're sticking to it. <laughs> 